tonight's Triple Bill starring Malcolm McDowell continues now on film four. Oh Lucky Man is at 2.15. But first, Stanley Kubrick's fabled version of Anthony Burgess's ultra-violent parable. A Clockwork Orange is introduced by Mark Kermode. Viewers are warned the film contains explicit scenes of violence and sexual violence. Tonight on Extreme Cinema, we invite you to relax with a glass of milk, a blast of Beethoven and lashings of the old ultraviolence as we present an uncut screening of one of the most notoriously influential cult movies of the 1970s, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. Legally unavailable in any format in the UK for nearly 30 years, this stylish near-future nightmare became the least seen, most talked about movie in town, turning Anthony Burgess's source novel into a set text for angst-ridden teenagers, spawning an early electro soundtrack album by Walter Carlos, which is still being sampled and imitated to this day, and influencing the dreadful fashion sense of a range of wannabe rockers from David Bowie to The Addicts to Heaven 17 to, God forbid, Zig Zig Sputnik. And all this for a movie which became known by reputation only after it disappeared entirely from British screens amidst howls of public outrage and wild accusations that its edgy depiction of highbrow teen violence was somehow leading the country into chaos. At the heart of A Clockwork Orange is a simple conundrum. Is it better for someone to be an anti-social thug with God-given free will, or a conformist automaton obeying the law out of necessity rather than choice? For writer Anthony Burgess, this question had particular significance since his wife had been brutally assaulted during World War II by a group of GIs, a horrendous event which inspired his novel's most shocking sequence in which a liberal author and his wife were attacked by a gang of teenagers for whom freedom of expression means the freedom to destroy. The fact that Kubrick's adaptation of Burgess's novel was later accused of inspiring exactly that kind of outrage is particularly ironic, since both writer and director were adamant that they set out to explore rather than celebrate violence, an aim appreciated by incoming censor Stephen Murphy, who passed A Clockwork Orange uncut and almost lost his job in the process. Hounded by the Festival of Light, investigated by the Home Secretary, and generally criticised for dereliction of duty, Stephen Murphy was accused of unleashing an unsafe movie upon an unsuspecting public. There was a terrible uproar, a spirited defence, and then suddenly, the movie was gone. The stories surrounding the disappearance of A Clockwork Orange from these shores are legend, with many remembering the fairly recent attempts to sue the Scala Cinema and Channel 4 Television, the latter unsuccessfully, for having the audacity to show even parts of this Oscar-rated classic. But crucially, in both these cases, the legal action was instigated not by the censors, but by the distributors, acting at the behest of the filmmaker who had effectively banned his own film. Why? Well, while Anthony Burgess had publicly criticised Kubrick's ignorance of chapter 21 of his novel, a redemptive coda missing from American editions of the book, which changed an exaltation of the earth to sin into a vindication of free will, Kubrick's own second thought seems to have been driven by the death threats which he and his family received from people who hated his movie. Terrified, Kubrick struck a deal with Warner Brothers that A Clockwork Orange would not be shown in Britain again in his lifetime. And so it was that his greatest work was banned from the UK until his recent untimely death, after which it resurfaced and was once again passed uncut by the BBFC. This screen resurrection was a particular treat not only for British film fans, but also for actor Malcolm McDowell, whose powerhouse central performance remains an eye-opening high point of an often overlooked career. Now you can see why Kubrick thought he was the only man for the job, as you experience the satanic majesty of Alex and his droogies in this uncut screening of A Clockwork Orange. When sex, violence and the F word nonchalantly replaced tradition, family values and a respect for your elders. But there was one film that still had the power to shock. A little while after the film was shown, there were a couple of what seemed like copycat murders. Surprisingly, it was a huge cult success, so popular it ran in 